<laughs> hey guys, it's PC Purse, Pussycat Purse. And if you're new over here, we review how Pose shows up in pop culture. So music videos, movies, TV shows, all those things. So I'm a pole dancer, pole enthusiast, pole instructor, all those things. So if you're interested in those things too, then come on in. Today we are reviewing the latest episode of P-Valley, episode five. So if you're into it, let's talk about it and let's have a little tutorial. Okay, so up until this point, I, I really liked Mississippi's manager. And we start with um, Clifford kind of narrating about how there's something about Mississippi's energy where you just want to save her. And you know, we, we all empathize with her. We see that she's in a domestic violence situation and she's just, a soft feeling character. You want to take care of her. I think I remember a long time ago, I want to say it was like Oprah was talking about Naomi Campbell. Maybe it was her. And they were saying there's just something about her energy where men just want to take care of her. It's so interesting. And so her manager is telling her about deals that he has and about how they're going to extend the tour another week and not to worry. He already cleared it with her boyfriend and how he's going to get her out of that situation. And Cliff's narration is saying, but you know, people don't leave until they're ready to leave. Like she doesn't really want to be saved. So don't save her. You know, so we know this probably isn't gonna end well because we know she is stuck on Derek, even though we don't know why. So then we see Lil' Murder. And it's again another situation where they're there to support Miss Mississippi, which you know he'll do, but he's like, How come I can't be in here performing? And his manager's like, because it's not your night, it's her night. Like, relax, fall back. And then um, it's like a love and hip hop reunion because Jocelyn is in there. And I'm like, this is crazy. We just did Jocelyn's series. Miami Tip is in there and, um, and Jessica Dom. And I'm like, I thought they were still fighting. I guess she made up with um, Jessica Dom. It's good to see the girls. So then Jocelyn performs and she does her routine. <laughs> Then this take y'all back? If y'all been watching me do this last series, it was taking me back. I was like, oh my God, this is a full circle moment. It was amazing. And she comes flying in. And then after she performs a little bit, then she introduces Keyshawn. So Keyshawn comes out and of course, you know, amazing, amazing. I think Ashley Fox is her stunt double and I've taken classes at her studio in the city. Um, so shout outs to Foxy Pole and Fitness. Ah! So we love to see it. She's amazing. Check her out too. So then this episode reveals to us Keyshawn's story, right? Miss Mississippi. So we find out that she has known Derek since high school. They both were trying out to be cheerleaders. He was a cheerleader and <clears throat> she didn't feel, she felt out of place. And he stood up for her when other people were making fun of her for her skin tone and for being the way that she was. But he did it with too much aggression. And then we see because of who he is, him not having to face any sort of punishment for it. So the black boys that he attacked got punished. They got expelled, no problem for them. And he gets to go on and be cheer captain. And it was a little unsettling to her, but she, you know, that was her savior, her white knight. So she just let it, she let it ride. But we're starting to see like how important he is to her and how like stuck in her story it is. And this is going to be a, a wild ride. Then we get to see it's, it's a little Cinderella story. She's got the wicked stepmother and two stepsisters who seem fine. And she lives in this big house, but their dynamic is one where she doesn't really feel loved or pretty. She's the darkest one. And so, so far, Derek is the only one to make her feel pretty. And that's important for little girls, you know? So she's having a hard family life. And it's, it's interesting to see, like we know it's a small town, but you really get to see how small of a town it is. She knew Derek from high school and Gidget from high school. Um, at a diner that they're at, we see that Mercedes' mother is a waitress there. And it might be Toy or one of the other girls that works in the pink now is just like somebody randomly in the diner having a meal. And it's, you know, that six degrees of separation thing and just how small towns are, or just how small the world is and just how intertwined our lives, is that a word? Inter intertwined our lives are so that was that was cool to see i like that let me know if you peep the um the other girl in the diner what's her name it's toy right that was toy right it was just so funny to see like they cast jocelyn to play herself right <laughs> 
<laughs> so she's over there trying to spit game to Keyshawn and then hands her a car. Like, listen, just you might need to talk. Hit me up. It was just real funny. And then we see um, Miss Mississippi almost didn't go to her prom. She didn't have a prom dress. She didn't have an invite. But Derek shows up with a dress for her and he takes her. And then she takes his virginity in the car at the end of the night. So, you know, it's interesting. And then they, they keep layering things onto his character because in the diner, they when, in, when they were in the diner, he was telling her how his father assumed that he was gay because of cheerleading. And, you know, it's like cheerleading is a sport. You shouldn't assume that. But they dropped it, you know, in television, they always drop little things for a reason. So I figured that would come up later. And then uh, and then we have like the aggression that he has. And we we've seen him with bruises at this point. So it's like, where are his bruises coming from? It seems like somebody at home is probably beating him. And then we see he's, you know, a little older than Keyshawn. He's an athlete. He's very good looking. And yet he still hasn't had any sexual relations yet, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it stands out. So it's, it seems like he's got a lot of things going on in his own personal life and red flags that she's not really paying attention to. But we're starting to understand how both of them are really kind of connected. But when she gets home, her stepmother does tell her like, She's noticing the way the boyfriend dressed her up and just how he's being. She's like, be careful being a Barbie doll because he'll get another one. And then in the present day, you know, Teak is tweaking out again. He reminds me of Tweak on South Park, just always spazzing out real quick. And um, Lil Murder's manager looks at uh, Miss Mississippi like, what is going on with them? Is there a relationship between the two of them going on? And they show them like talking with the eyes through like text bubbles. And that was a really cute moment. And so they're both like on the same page. They're like, okay, the two of them have a personal history. And so then we jump back to the past and we see Keyshawn and Derek and she's now pregnant. And they're having a discussion about, that gets heated about basically how racism is impacting their family, about how his mother wasn't necessarily super receptive of her and didn't really help them out with getting their, their first apartment and stuff like that, how it was her father that had to pay for everything. And they get into a fight about this and she's eight months pregnant, he starts to choke her. So that was her first, I guess, real sign that he was gonna be abusive. And she tries to leave and she tries to go home and the stepmother doesn't allow her in. And the stepmother tells her that the father is on the same page with her. So when she goes back home, Derek has flowers laid out in the baby room. And it's it's one of those things where she she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. She really doesn't have anywhere to go. If she forgives him, she can kind of like push it to the side and hope for the best. But it's, she really needed to go in that moment and she didn't take it. And it, it was really sad. But we so many women that happens to. That's such a horrible time too to find out somebody's abusive when you're eight months pregnant. What a terrifying thing. So we jump back to the present and the manager, you know, tells her we didn't get the lace front deal, but we did get a pleaser deal. He pulls out a shoe and she's disappointed. But, you know, a pleaser deal really would be dope. Oh, my God. It's my dream to have like a shoe deal. There are other shoes besides pleasers, but like everybody knows pleasers. But to do a collab with pleaser, that would be amazing. I would be like, can I make some changes? a few little things but anyway it's not about me but he offers her that and then he shows her the shoe and tells her to try it on so you know he's leading her further into the apartment and then he gets her to try on and he's got on a robe and so my first thought goes off this is uncomfortable and her her little spider senses are tingling too because like we're supposed to be going out to an event where are your clothes why do you only have on a robe but you know you don't want to assume this is the moment to get out, ladies. Like, seriously, I, so many of us have been in this position where you 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 wind up in a spot and it's like, oh, shit. And you like, I don't want to think something somebody like is about to be predatory, but this could be a situation. If you're in one of these situations and your spidey sensors go off, it's better to assume the worst and get out of there and be safe than to try to be impolite. Than to try to be polite and then like 
something go left. Like, you know, so she tries on the shoes and she's in the lounge and, you know, her costume and he's pulled out a camera. He's recording her and making advances toward him, toward her. And his robe is open. So now she knows, right? There's no denying this now. And she's like, you know, you're exposing yourself, put it away kind of thing. And he's telling her how she owes him because he's setting up all these deals and things like that and how just go with it. He could do so much more for her. And it really sucks because up until this point, it seemed like he was looking, you know, he was still kind of a little shady with her, but he was getting her these deals and things like that. And they did seem to have like a, a good rapport before this. So he didn't have to do this. He's just such an asshole. And it, it sucks because she doesn't owe him. He gets paid when she gets paid. He gets a cut. That's your job. You're her manager. You get a cut. You get a percentage of the money that she's taking in. Like you don't owe somebody for being employed to them. You don't owe them your body. It's ridiculous. And she's trying to get away from him. And she winds up backing into the bedroom. I'm like, girl, you wrong way to back up. And so, of course, then he shows her that he has recorded Lil Murder and Teak together. So now she at first I thought he was going to try to extort her with that. But he just really like goes for it, tries to rip her clothes off, tries to rape her. She gets free and she winds up going to the hotel room of Lil Murder's manager and she tells him about the recording. And as soon as she told him and he had this look on his face, I was like, oh, shit, something's up, you know? But of course, he takes it in. So here we go. Somebody else saving her. So let's see what happens with this. But I'm glad she got away from him because I really thought he was going to attack her. So this is a very triggering episode for a lot of people for various reasons. So, you know, I hope you're OK listening to this. So Miss Mississippi wanted to go home after all that. So she goes home and Derek is there with the two kids. And the, the older kid is, you know, acting funny and acting like he's in pain and she takes him to the doctor and his shoulder his elbow or his arm is dislocated or fractured and he's got bruises all over his body and so it's like you know Derek did it right you've seen him throughout y'all entire history beating people up beating you up now you come home your baby is beat up you know what it is I, I know it's a tv show but there's no way I would have went home after that. She's been making money on the road. I she so I would have had to find somewhere to go. But she goes home, puts the baby down, and she attempts to confront him. So when she walks in, he's ironing. And I'm like, I you know, your sense has got to go off. This man is super violent and doesn't take accountability. And you're going to go confront him on doing one of the most horrific things that he wouldn't want somebody to know while he's got a hot weapon in his hand. Girl, you you already know what's going to happen. So we're just I'm just sitting there like, oh, God, please, God. So she puts the baby down and confronts him. And of course, he proceeds to beat her ass. And then he holds the iron up to her face, threatening to like burn her. And she's saying, please, anywhere but my face. And it is just. It's so upsetting and it's so scary. And I know like so many people have been through domestic violence situations or have witnessed it. And it's truly a scary thing. And I'm watching it like, at what point in time is it going to be enough for you to walk away? Because like Uncle Clipper said, when somebody's fed up, they walk away and she still hasn't reached that point. And it's like, what is Keyshawn's point going to be? Because... This was truly, truly scary to watch. So let me know how you felt watching this scene, if it impacted you like that. But I, I was so upset watching that scene. I was so scared for her. Like, oh, I'm glad she's OK. But it's like next time you might not be or your kid might not be. I would be devastated to know somebody put their hands on my kid. I would have been out. I wouldn't have been back anywhere in that home if I had a choice. And it's scary to think that some women don't have a choice or they feel like they don't have a choice. Horrible. So then um, the episode ends and we get to see why Lil Murder's manager and friend is like, 
his day one. So we know he's mad about what happened. And he goes looking for um for Mississippi's manager and finds him like in a sex club and offers him some drugs. So I'm like, oh, I already know where this is going because I saw the look in the little twinkle in his eye when Mississippi told him what happened. And so the guy has a moment like, because you know, he knows he knows what he did. So he's like, let me see you take some first. And he just moves a little vial along the coke line to make it look like he took some. And this guy's so thirsty, he just takes a line. Starts talking about, oh, you know, we can get a little murder in here some type of way. It takes another line. And then <laughs> Lil Murder's manager starts asking him, you know, what he wants to do with his body when he dies and starts talking to him about murder. And I'm like, damn, this man that his family is associated with the funeral home, you know, just driving him around this gold casket. If anybody's going to know how to hide a body or how to make it look like an accident or whatever, it's going to be him, you know. And yeah, he set him up. Only thing I would say is, he needed to get his phone. Maybe it happened and they didn't show it, but he showed him the video. I mean, he showed Keyshawn the video. I would have taken his phone and um, kept it moving. But yeah, he walked out and it was an accident. And it's sad because it made me think about um, like all the people that have passed away from fentanyl, people who lost their lives. Like my, I can't lie, Michael K. Williams crossed my mind for a second. And it was just, it was touching, but I, I do not miss his character. And that was a badass way to write him off. So shout out to Lil Murder's manager, not for murdering somebody, but just like having a real like badass moment on television. That was cool. So let me know how you felt watching this episode. Um, <clears throat> so for today's tutorial, we're going to do an inside leg hang. We saw uh, Miss Mississippi do it at one point in her routine. And if you've been working on your chopper, it's something that you can access from that. So we're just building on that. And so follow me to the pole. Inside leg hangs. <sighs> These hurt a lot more than outside leg hangs, which are my favorite, but you need to know both. So don't worry. We're going to go through our drills so that you'll be prepared for it and just be prepared for a little bit of pain with this one. <laughs> so to prep for this leg hang, we're going to go through some familiar shapes. We're going to be tucking our pelvis, bringing our legs back. Only this time, instead of our outside leg hooking, it's going to be our inside leg, the leg that's closest to the pole. And this leg is going to come up and it's going to bend and our outside leg is going to go down. This position for you may or may not be comfortable. So, you know, that's where some of this pain is going to come in at. So to reverse it, leg comes back, straighten the leg, we'll come back down. So again, for this move, legs are going to come up with the hips, hook this inside leg, outside leg goes down. To reverse it, you can bring your legs up. You can even go into your outside leg hang from there. And you can do your leg switches like that. So you can practice that. And come down. So let's try it with the hip thrust. So what's going to happen, we'll bring our hips up, hook, come back down. Up, hook. Bring it down. One more time, up and hook. And you can practice letting the hands go and coming down. <sighs> you ready to take it up there? Let's do it. To do this move, you are gonna need some skin. So I'm gonna show you how to do this move on spin, but I'm gonna go into it from a side climb and I'll be spinning reverse. How did your inside leg hang go? 
Is it accessible? That one, that one definitely hurts. So if that's where you're at with it, I don't blame you. You will get used to it. Your skin will toughen up in that area. You'll be fine. Just keep going. Um, yeah, guys, let me know how you felt about this episode. It was a lot, but it was really, really good. I'm really enjoying this season. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys for the next one.